literally light a torch and a flame on the oil well and burn the gas off because it's so much more economical to go after the oil. You all show up. And the idea is, hey, don't burn the gas. You're gonna go on site, you're gonna consume it for Bitcoin mining. Why have we not seen every single oil and gas company like rush out and get as many of these contracts signed as possible? I'd say like 60 to 80% of oil and gas, like publicly traded oil and gas companies have had some sort of Bitcoin mining pilot project. They will not talk about it though. Why? I don't know. You cannot have a conversation today about natural gas without talking about Bitcoin. Do we think Russia's doing this? All right, guys. Bang, bang. I've got Matt here with me. Uh, everyone wants to know about flared gas Bitcoin mining. They hear about it. It's supposed to be, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, but I've got this theory. Nobody actually knows what the hell it means. Um, so I thought a great place to start would just be like flared gas itself is obviously a, a huge problem people understand, uh, but they don't know how it works. Can you explain flared gas from kind of a 101 standpoint in terms of why is it being created and what's kind of the problem with this? Yeah, absolutely. So when the industry is called oil and gas, it's because when you drill a well, oil and gas flow out of the ground. And it's often referred sometimes to when these guys are going after oil, associated gas. So to get to the oil, you have to get rid of the gas. Oil is in a liquid form. Natural gas is in a gaseous form. Oil is often trucked off on locations. Natural gas, because of the sheer amount of volume it has, has to go through pipelines. Pipelines take really long times. They have a lot of regulatory things going on in the place. And so just as a natural byproduct, when you have these massive wells come online, you don't have a market to get rid of the gas, but you still want to get to the oil. So what these guys do, and all these oil producers, is they flare the gas. And what I mean by that is they literally light a torch and a flame on the oil well and burn the gas off because it's so much more economical to go after the oil. So I dig a hole and when I dig the hole, there's oil and gas. The oil, I know what to do with. I can bring it up to the surface. I put it into barrels or whatever yep. and I get it onto a truck and I take it away and I'm going to go sell it. I'm going to get rich. But the gas, the only thing I can do with it because it's in this specific gas form uh, is to build basically entire pipelines. Billion dollars. Uh, and if I do that, I could make money with it, mm -hmm. but it takes too long and it's too expensive. So I'm much better off just saying, screw it. I know I dig this hole and there's two assets that are in there, but really I can make enough money on just one of them that I can just burn the other one and kind of throw it out. Exactly. All right. When they burn it, that's when bad shit happens. Yes. W what is going on in that process? Yeah. So um, flares, uh, the flame or the torch on the oil well site, they do not have 100% combustion. And what I mean by that is when you burn methane, CH4, it combusts into CO2, but you're not burning all of it. You're burning around 91% of it. And methane, CH4, as a greenhouse gas, is about 25 times worse for the environment than uh, CO2. CO2. Yes. So 9% of what is going into the air is really, really bad shit. 91% of it maybe isn't the best thing, but it's way better than if it was the CH4 or the methane. Exactly. Okay. I'm not a scientist, so I'm going to call that out to start because uh, I'm going to say a lot of dumb shit probably today. Um, but as this process is happening, how much is gas flaring contributing to the folks who believe that climate change is explicitly due to human involvement or human action? Like if we went and stopped all gas flaring, could we solve the climate crisis? Or is it a small percentage or somewhere in between? Um, I'd say for the – relative amount of natural gas out there that's being flared if you were to mitigate that it would have a the, it would it would take a small amount of effort to have a massively outsized impact on the environment just because of how potent methane is 25 times worse every dollar you put in you're getting 25 25 x on your return mm -hmm. uh, and mitigating that so um it wouldn't solve the climate change issue by any means at all but it would have a significant impact uh dollar for dollar and what are people doing now before the whole Bitcoin mining stuff, like, are there things that people are trying to do to solve the gas flaring problem? Are they like, I'm assuming yep. uh, lobbying, telling the oil companies to stop yep. is probably step one. Uh, but like, what else are people trying to do to solve this problem? So the World Bank has, has set out a goal to ban world, uh, flaring all around the world by 2030. So it's in everyone's minds that it needs to be done. Okay. Now you have people like Russia in there, a lot of people in the Middle East, right? They're not going to be as open to that. But like, that's where a mass amount of flaring is going on. And so... For everyone kind of agrees it's a waste. Oil producers don't want to lose revenue and people don't want to have the, you go to Midland, you don't even need to drive with headlights at night because there's so many flames lighting up the highway. Really? Yes. 
that's how like prevalent it is. Wow. Yeah. That, that is like literally yes. probably the craziest thing anyone's told me about this entire yeah. industry is that there is so much flaring happening that it almost acts as streetlights. Yes. Jesus. Okay. So if the producer does not flare the gas, is this when we see like Russia's got, you know, 15% of all natural gas exports and things like this through all these pipelines? Like mm -hmm. that's basically what is going on uh, where they're not flaring and they're actually using the natural gas and sending it somewhere else. In the United States, do we have a big network of pipelines for natural gas or like we get like a B minus grade? Like how, how would you kind of think about the United States' infrastructure for moving natural gas around? Yeah, so it's sticky, right? So there's massive amount of infrastructure and pipelines all throughout East Texas, Louisiana area, and going all the way up to the East Coast. But when we discover a new basin, for instance, uh, over in Pennsylvania, they discovered all this new natural gas uh, not too long ago. There's no market to get it from Pennsylvania to New York. Mm -hmm. And we discovered a new basin in North Dakota. There's no network out there, and these pipelines are at complete capacity, 100%. And so they say, even though you have a pipeline here, we, it, sh it literally can't hold any more gas. And so there's this delayed effect of finding a basin and then not being able to monetize that gas. Okay. Uh, I'm going to really venture into things I don't know about. Uh, Keystone Pipeline yep. was being built, gets shut down. What is that? That was an oil pipeline. Okay, so that's yeah. oil. That's not yeah. natural gas. Are there natural gas pipelines that are controversial or people have tried to either build or shut down and, and, and there ends up being kind of like, a, I guess, maybe intellectual battles over them or, or political yeah, battles? I mean, whenever you build a pipeline, you have to get right of ways. You have to have massive amounts of capital to do so. Um, there's the administrations in recent years. Uh, bipartisan have been like cracking down on it because there's a lot of old pipelines out there that are leaking methane. And so from an operating standpoint, a regular st regulatory standpoint, there's a very high barrier to entry to build a pipeline. Okay. So we talked about dig a hole, oil and gas. Uh, then we're now talking about transportation of both oil and gas. But ultimately, the transportation is going somewhere. Like, the point is not just to, like, drive around in a truck. Yep. <laughs> it is to get it eventually somewhere. Uh, and so the consumers of oil are pretty well understood. The consumers of natural gas, who are they normally? Yeah, so, uh, for instance, fertilizer. Massive amount of natural gas uh, is used to create fertilizer. Um, heating, uh, home heating devices. Now, we're moving away towards electrifying all of that. Uh, and then natural gas power plants. So I think... A massive amount, uh, like 40, 50 percent of Texas is powered off natural gas. It's super efficient, super clean relative to all the other fossil fuels. Uh, and so that's where a massive amount of power comes from uh, on that side of things. And is it fair to think about, so take Texas as an example, they're going to drill for the oil. There's economic incentives to yep. do it. The world runs on oil, right? Um, and so rather than flare this asset by ha being able to consume it, uh, you're really just allowing the oil and gas companies to understand uh, they're turning what would be trash, right, or, or kind of yep. waste into a revenue stream, which they're incentivized to do. But you almost need the oil and gas and the infrastructure to fit into the consumption and like the local economy as well. Is that like a fair framework to use? Yeah, that's good. What we kind of try and do, we try and make a lot of analogies with these oil producers. Uh, the first one we start off is calling it a digital midstream or a digital pipeline. Mm -hmm. There's a market for your gas and we can sell it. Here's the amount of revenue per unit of gas you would make. Got it. Now, the flared gas problem, bad news. Uh, you all show up and uh, you all being the mining industry in general, but also yep. obviously uh, gig energy uh, as well. And the idea is, hey, don't burn the gas. Don't transport it away, like we will consume it right here. So rather than try to get it to a fertilizer plant, try to get it to yep. uh, homes or whatever, you're going to go on site, you're going to consume it for Bitcoin mining. Mm -hmm. That sounds like, ah, like the holy grail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, what does that actually entail? Like what's going on when you show up? Like maybe start with, you go to an oil and gas company, you say, hey, you got gas, we want it. Yep. Walk me through the process actually getting infrastructure in place so you can act, consume it on site. Yeah, so the biggest thing, because everyone's going after the cheapest form of energy, that's why we go after flare gas. The drawback with flare Bitcoin mining is the fact it's so capital intensive up front. You have to buy a natural gas generator, so a reciprocating engine or a turbine that takes in gas, combusts it, turns a generator, and puts out electricity. Mm -hmm. Then you have to put in the modular data centers. The nice thing is you don't have to have any sort of transformers because you're creating your own voltage. You don't have these massive voltage outputs. How much is the machine to make the electricity? Usually ranges from 250,000 to half a million a megawatt. 
Okay, so these these are like compared to like setting up a restaurant that's way more expensive than yes. most of the the yes. machinery that goes into that. All right, and then the modular data center, uh, how big are they? How much do those usually cost? Yeah, so and to, to preface this, so we have a manufacturing facility. We have about 20,000 square feet of manufacturing in Texas. We manufacture the natural gas generators in-house and we manufacture the containers in-house. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily because we can do it so much cheaper, but because we don't have the COVID excuse of timelines. So we are in charge of our own deployment schedules and we're not relying on other people. Mm-hmm. Um, the data centers themselves, they're, they're usually around 60,000 to 100,000 a megawatt. So those are actually, oh, per megawatt. Per okay, megawatt. all right. Yeah. And when you set these up, can you set up uh, one of these combustion engines uh, and like one data center and you just make it as big as you want? Or is it something where there's like a ratio that you need a certain amount of uh, the modular data centers per engine or whatever? Yeah, usually what we do is we do one-to-one. One generator powers one data center. Um, there's a lot of things that go on the electrical engineering side of stuff and – the fuel input, and then all these variables. And so the, if you have one-to-one ratio, that's usually best. How many machines can go in the modular data center usually? We do anywhere from 320 to 400. Okay. And given current prices now, let's just do a little math exercise. Yeah. It's public math. Forgive us if we make mistakes. Uh, let's call 400 machines. Given current difficulty and price sitting around $20,000, what like are two they? Two grand. Two grand per yeah. day. So about sixty thousand dollars. I'm sorry, two grand for a computer. Other so, asking, you're asking revenue. Okay, so the the uh, the price of the machine is about two grand. Yep. So really, you're in two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the engine. You're in about let's call it sixty to one hundred k for the actual data center itself, and then you're in about eight hundred thousand dollars for all the machinery. So if we add all of that up, public math, call it one point two, one point three million dollars somewhere in that ballpark. Yep. How much revenue can it drive today? So right now with specific Bitcoin prices, you're going to be generating 30 petahash market rate. It's going to be 72 bucks. So right around sometimes three. Yeah. So like around, around 200, like two grand a day. $2,000 yeah, a about day. Yeah, about 2000 a day. Okay. So it's like $60,000 uh, every single month. Yep. And so year and a half, give or take, basically kind of payback period. But that's with Bitcoin at a $20,000 price point. Right. And most of these guys, uh, being the oil and gas companies, do they understand, uh, hold the Bitcoin on the balance sheet? Mm-hmm. Or are they basically trying to mine Bitcoin at the oil uh, kind of head? Uh, oil head, I think is the right terminology. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, or And they're trying to sell it for cash flow. So it is very hard to get oil and gas companies comfortable with Bitcoin. Sometimes they're comfortable with it. Sometimes low level management is, but then some like usually goes up the chain and then some C, C guy sh- shoots it down. The old people. Yeah. The old people. Yeah. Um, Experience is how yeah, we like to yes. call it around here. So there's two ways we structure Bitcoin mining getting on, right? I'm sure you saw Exxon getting into oil and gas uh, on the Bitcoin mining side. They did not actually mine the Bitcoin themselves. Mm-hmm. They just had a gas purchasing agreement. So they sold the gas to a Bitcoin miner for a certain amount that was below market rate. Why is that controversial? And and uh, let me give some context here. I saw the news. Uh, I may or may not have known that uh, there was a pilot going on mm-hmm. previously, uh, but I thought it was like one machine, you know, like I, I didn't put yeah. a lot of kind of weight behind it. I saw the news and I was like, oh, obviously everyone's gonna be like, duh, this is so smart. The reaction was like, very controversial. The Bitcoiners loved it. And there's a bunch of people who were basically like Exxon is the devil. And like, why are they doing this? If they're just selling the gas, it almost felt like maybe like there was a morality being assigned to like who the consumer was. Yeah, I think it's somewhere along those lines. And then you have the generalized like Bitcoin uses too much energy, right? Debate. And I think it just comes from lack of education personally. Okay. Is it controversial that they were doing this? I, I, the echo chamber I'm in with Bitcoiners and oil and gas guys, it was not controversial. Okay. So all they're doing is they're just selling gas that they may have otherwise flared or sold to another customer to a Bitcoin miner. And the miner is mining, uh, but they're keeping the Bitcoin being the miner, not Exxon. Correct. Okay. And, and the thing is these publicly traded oil and gas companies, especially Exxon, right? They have ESG mandates where like people are taking their revenues and dividing it by the amount of flare gas you have, right? And looking at all these different metrics and then scoring them and docking these guys. And so they are under very specific mandates to come down and like get rid of all flaring volumes. I, we know publicly traded companies that, like, one, one particular project we weren't able to come out and service, they dug a pit in the ground and flared the gas like below surface and then covered it up with all this technology. Wait, 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 wait. Rewind this. Hold on, hold on. In an effort to still continue to flare the gas, but not let anyone know they were doing it, they basically built an underground bunker and were flaring it under the ground? Not like, but it wasn't covered, but yeah, I mean, they dug like a big old pit in the ground 
and oh, it, so it was exposed, but it was yeah, below the surface, dropping so the sunlight you, in and everything like because they're in a really small town, yeah. and so they didn't want all these people around there. Everyone knows who the company is. They didn't want to get a bad rap, and like they're under a very strict mandate from execs. And so, where did the gas go? They flared it. They're, they're flaring it, but in, it's just, into the sky. Yeah. But it's just you can't see you it. Can't so see like, the flare. So like it's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, did they? Did it really fall? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, is that a common practice? That I was very surprised when I heard that. Okay. So keep, and keep in mind, I don't come from the oil and gas industry. Mm-hmm. My my business partner, he's third generation oil and gas. So any um, knowledge of oil and gas that I seem to have, I just learned it from him. That's fair. Uh, I'm going to learn from yeah, you. Yeah. So like this, like I'm fifth generation yeah, oil yeah. and gas, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if you think about the flaring component, if they have to get rid of flaring being the oil and yep. gas companies, uh, and there is this solution, why have we not seen every single oil and gas company like rush out and get as many of these contracts signed as possible and then turn around to the public markets and be like, oh, look, we're like these eco-friendly warriors and look at how smart we are. We've figured out a plan to get rid of all of our flared gas. M- most... I'd say like 60 to 80 percent of oil and gas, like publicly traded oil and gas companies have had some sort of Bitcoin mining pilot project. They will not talk about it, though. Why? I don't know. There's some sort of perception with Bitcoin, whether it's the um, supposed criminality of it, the energy consumption, fake money, like there's all this stigma surrounding it and they don't want to deal with it. Are you allowed to say the other companies who have pilots? I can't, no, okay. unfortunately. Right. Well, see, now you won't yeah. say it either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just jump to the big dog, Aramco. Uh, I keep seeing everyone's talking about that. Yep. And they're like, Aramco's going to do Bitcoin mining. My understanding, uh, again, this is a rumor because yep. they're already piloting stuff. They're already trying stuff. Uh, but let's say hypothetically they came out and they publicly said, we are going to do this. They, I believe, are the largest oil and gas yes. kind of energy company. They're the, the largest world. company in the world. Yeah. Okay. Um, What would be the impact if they publicly kind of stood behind doing this type of uh, effort? Today's episode is brought to you by FTX US. They're a safe, regulated way to buy Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. They've got very cheap fees, sometimes as much as 85% cheaper than their competitors. There's also no minimum fees. There's no withdrawal fees or any other hidden fees. Ultimately, FTX US is trying to make it dead simple for you to buy Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. They also now have digital stock trading as well, with no transaction fees and no payment for order flow. All you have to do is go download the FTX app today from the App Store and use code POMP and you'll get some money back every single time you trade $10 or more. Again, go download the FTX app today, use code POMP, and every time you trade $10 or more, they'll go ahead and they'll give you some crypto back. The more you trade, the more you earn. Download the FTX app today. Um, I, I think from the American side, it wouldn't have a lot of impact. It would not. Yeah, from the oil and gas companies, because it's just different cultures. Uh, you have Vision like 2030, I think it is, where they're trying to diversify out of their oil and gas assets. Mm-hmm. What better way than to take your oil and gas assets and get Bitcoin into the kingdom, mm-hmm. from my personal perspective, from a financial side of things. But uh, internationally, though, I think it would have some, like, pretty cool implications mm-hmm. if, if they're doing that at scale. Why would the American companies not care if Aramco said they were doing it? Um, like, it, it doesn't provide, like, uh, I think when Paul Tudor Jones and Stanley Druckenmiller were like, we're yes, buying Bitcoin, right. there's, like, career risk removed for yes. Wall Street. Would Aramco, you think, because it's just not an American company? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I, more along the American company line of things. Mm-hmm. It's just not within the culture subset. Now, I might be wrong, but, like, to me, it wouldn't be, like, it, that's not the equivalent of, like, Apple coming out and saying, like, we think Bitcoin's good publicly, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, the same amount of implications that would have. Is there a oil and gas company in America that you think would have the, like, Paul Tudor Jones, Stanley Druckenmiller effect if they came out and said that they were doing it? Yeah, I think if ExxonMobil, would, like, owned it and was like, no, no, we're not selling the gas, we're, we're using it, here's the operations, here's what it is, and, like, publicly pushing it, I think that would have a lot of people, like, go, like, going, huh? Yeah. But and they're kind of, like, hesitant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it seems like the open secret in the oil and gas industry is everyone's trying it. You cannot have a conversation today about natural gas without talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. Do you, we think Russia's doing this? Like, as a nation? But just they got, sure a lot, they got a lot of natural gas on. they're exporting, right? Like, and again, I am not an expert yeah. on, the, yeah, yeah. on oil or natural gas. Uh, but I would think that if you are a surplus or if you have a surplus yep. and you're exporting a lot, mm-hmm. uh, sure, you can make money doing that. Yep. And they have the pipelines, all stuff. But like if you figure out a way to very profitably consume it on site, you probably will at least like run the math. Oh, yeah. And, and the thing is, too, Russia and uh, has, has some of the most largest amount of flare gas in the world. They have these massive... Um, natural gas treatment facilities so that's where you take the methane and you strip out because it's natural gas so it's not pure methane there's propane ethane butane and so in these processes 
there's just so much extra waste. And so they're flaring like hundreds of megawatts, centralized facilities in Russia. And you can see it like one satellite. Now, when you say centralized, uh, they're going in there, drilling in all these places. They're getting the natural yep. gas. They're bringing it to a central facility and they're lighting it on fire. They're treating it and then they have this extra amount of gas that they don't really want because they're going after another subsect of the gas and they just have these massive flares going on. And so rather than flare, mine, and yep. like you're rich. And, and that's the biggest like drawback and complaint about flare gas Bitcoin mining is it's fragmented. You have all of these different like one or five megawatt, 10 megawatt locations all over the place. You can't have a centralized 100 megawatt facility like you could on grid. And like that would be an instance of having massive scale. So Russia has this centralized component. Does America, do we not have these no. centralized facilities? No, we don't. We're, we're pretty efficient on in terms of treating the gas and making sure we pick up every drop. Got it. And so if this became more prevalent in the oil and gas industry, do you think people would be incentivized to build the centralized facilities? Absolutely. It just... Well, so no, so we have the centralized facilities. It's just when we're treating the gas, mm -hmm. we take up every single, we're super efficient with oh, it. Oh, got it. So we're yeah. not, we don't actually, at the centralized facilities, we don't need to burn it because we're using everything. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, we're extremely efficient. Russia, everything like that, they're kind of lackadaisical. Got it. And so the only reason why we're flaring is because we don't want to move it at all. It's not, we don't get something out of the process. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all of the miners that are publicly traded right now, they all do not use flared gas or there's some that actually have flared gas facilities as well? I don't know of any publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies that use flared gas. Okay. Is there a size constraint? You mentioned earlier 100 megawatts. If there's only one to five yep. megawatts, like they are trying to go for bigger facilities. Is it a public market won't like this? Like wh wh why do you think um, there's this like very interesting thing that's happening yep. in the mining space, but the publicly traded miners aren't doing it yet? I think it'll happen. Um, it's just on the side. It's so technically engineering intensive. Mm -hmm. Like it's super easy for an oil and gas guy to get into Bitcoin mining, but it is near impossible for a Bitcoin miner to get into oil and gas. They're, Why? There's there's so different world. Like they're completely different. You have safety concerns. You have um, like FR, like fire resistant materials you have to wear on locations. You have a natural gas generator that has 250 moving parts that will break and you have to maintain at all times. It's not like driving your Toyota Camry. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much that goes into it on the engineering side, safety, you're working with fuel systems that have a thousand PSI of pressure mm -hmm. that could kill you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a Bitcoin miner on grid, all they do is they just plug into an outlet and negotiate a power contract. Mm -hmm. Like it's very different type of. That's like the asset light. It's not really asset light, but it's the equivalent of like Uber owns no cars. Yeah. It feels like uh, if you're not doing the actual oil and gas work, then you kind of are just, you know, you're freeloading. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're still. I'm you're, joking. Your I'm energy joking. comes from natural <laughs> gas. You're just downstream of it. Um, when. You think of these facilities, what is the maintenance like? So it, yeah. you've gone out, you, you've got the uh, generator, you've got the um, uh, data center, yep. you've got the machines in there. Do you all have to have like a full-time person? How many people per machine? Like how do you think about the maintenance of these to make sure that they're always producing capital? Yeah, so we have a minimum threshold for our facilities uh, and we always have two full-time staff per facility. We have a full-time mechanic and we have a full-time um, ASIC technician per se. Uh, the mechanic is in charge of regularly checking up on the generators daily, making sure that everything's running smooth. There's no smoke coming out, right? There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Uh, we have a lot of um, data analytics that we read digitally, uh, making sure that we have a lot of preventative maintenance going into place. Um, there's so many different like KPIs and metrics that you need to pay attention to on this side of things to make sure you have consistent power production. What's the smallest facility you all have built? And what's the largest, not by name, but just like size wise, like how many generators maybe? Um, yeah, generator wise, it'd probably be around, um, one, one facility we have has about, uh, eight generators within a 10 square mile radius. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty big, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're basically, uh, able to generate what, $16,000 a day, give or take through eight generators. Yeah. I mean, it depends. I mean, we have varying amounts of generators based on the natural gas sizes, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's up there. Okay. Uh, this is a, a side note, but important. Um, have you seen the viral video of the guys uh, drilling for oil and they've got the chain and they keep throwing it around yeah. and, and uh, people are like, oh, this is actually what like mastery and hard work yeah. looks like compared to like the laptop class. Uh, what, what is that? that just like a normal oil well? And like, that's what goes on in these uh, facilities all the time? Yeah. I mean, I mean um, again, I'm not oil professional by any means, but uh, you are taking 
pipe that's five, six inches in diameter and sticking it like 10,000 feet down into the earth, divvying it at an angle, going after a very specific pinpoint in the earth and hitting that. And now when you put these pipes together, like it's not one big piece, right? They're 20 foot long. So then you got to twist them together. And now if you're going to be 10,000 feet in the air, you got to make sure they're really twisted together. So like there's all this stuff of like you got to use these massive chains. Uh, it's like a very dangerous labor intensive process. OK, I, I wanted to uh, <laughs> elicit the visual of yeah. that specific video because the natural gas side is it the same danger kind yes. of griminess and, and, and all that that you see in that video. What, what are they doing there? Same thing, just putting together the pipes or something else. So in that video that, that you're referencing, um, they're 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 twisting together these pieces of pipe that are going down in the earth mm -hmm. like 10,000 feet deep. Mm -hmm. And so they're taking these chains and it's called throwing chains. And so you start on the That bottom. just sounds fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, it's wild. It's <laughs> wild. Uh, it's super dangerous. I mean, like if you let the chain slip, it'll break your back. Wow. I mean, you got like, I mean, these chains are like 300 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you, you, they're called throwing chains. You throw them up and then they, you basically, you walk the chain up and it twists it in a fashion that, that cinches it together. And it's like one last cinch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on top of it of, of the, and then and then you, you take the pipe and you stick it down the earth and you do it all over again mm -hmm. and that, and so what it's really doing is it's pulling the pipe down into the earth and then there's another pipe that comes over yeah. you put you th throw the chains yep. right and then you just keep continue doing that process all the way to ten thousand feet yeah jesus christ um we are all such and fucking, that's how your t-shirts made yeah this we're all <laughs> such fucking losers that don't do that every day yeah. um all right so in that process as the pipe is going down is the oil coming up and just the one pipe, or is oil and gas both coming up in the same pipes? Oh, now you're getting out of my uh -oh, league. Uh-oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I don't want to Brent, – Brent's watching this right now, um, my business partner. Uh, from what I know, the oil there, – there's there's kind of sections of pipe within each other, so oil flows through one, and then, like, Got it. the outside of the, the gas flows up. The okay, way. that makes sense. Um, once we get up in, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, reality, yeah. uh, outside of the ground – is there a world where people will start to use the oil on site to mine Bitcoin or is it no. just the gas? Just the gas. Okay. Explain why. Uh, the, I mean, the, the opportunity cost of using oil on an economic basis for all these other purposes is, is far outweighed than like the marginal revenue you can make mining Bitcoin. Really? Yeah. So actually the gas is valuable because it's burn it and make nothing and destroy the environment uh, or – mine Bitcoin. Correct. So like that's a no brainer. It's like revenue versus yep. essentially lost revenue. Um, but the oil, even if you were to be able to mine on site, it's still more profitable to direct the oil to other use cases. Correct. And I'm not even aware of like power production. That's like powered off of raw crude oil. Like mm -hmm. it has to be refined and go yep. through all these massive facilities. And so, yeah, there's, there's too much opportunity. Cost. And so I'm assuming that means that there aren't like modular refining slash power production type things that they're putting at the wellheads. No, no. A, a oil refinery is like multi-billion dollar national security, like pumping out. It's like Andrew Carnegie, like, uh, yes. you know, Rockefeller, JP Morgan shit. Like, yeah, like wild. I, I remember watching a documentary and being like, wow, it is amazing that uh, Rockefeller literally became a equivalent of a billionaire because he was like, oh, you don't want to put my oil on your train? I will create pipelines. Yeah. <laughs> and that was like a groundbreaking idea. And but that was like, a $3 oil. Yeah. Yeah, or whatever that was back then. Yeah. <laughs> but like that is really how so much of this industry has been built is like somebody faced a problem and they had to figure out how to solve it. So if we fast forward to today, one of the problems is the gas flaring. What is your all's view in terms of how this plays out? So like we know now kind of, again, uh, I just got my crash course on like yep. how it works. If we look forward, do we expect that every single oil and gas company will eventually not flare gas and they'll mine Bitcoin? Will they just figure out something else to do with the gas? Like, like what does this look like going forward? Uh, well, the first part of that question to answer is the price of natural gas. So right. prior to uh, 12 months ago, natural gas was at super depressed prices. It was at $2 per unit of gas, uh, which is like basically nothing. Sometimes in the summers when there's not much demand, it was around a dollar. What was the Putin gas hike? What did it go to? Uh, up to like 10 $10. Oh, yeah. So 500%. Eight, yeah. 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 Um, and so I think we're sitting right now on six, eight, six to eight dollars okay. and to have like a dollar price swing in this day and age was like wild back then. It was mm -hmm. 50%. And so a lot of the, so oil and gas, natural gas production and flaring starts skyrocketing because of two reasons, more, more, more and more drilling. And two, 
depressed natural gas prices. So basically, we're cr- we're, we're uncovering more natural gas through the drilling process, yep. but we also can't make tons of money with it because it's so cheap. So therefore, it doesn't make sense for us to build the pipelines to get it. Exactly. Okay. Um, and now the pipelines. It's, it's funny. Supply yeah, exactly. demand. <laughs> they call it the Permian Highway. So the Permian Highway is coming in. Everyone's trying to get these pipelines here because they want to get more for their gas. What is the Permian Highway? So the Permian Basin is Midland, Texas. Mm-hmm. That's where that big region. Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's that's where all the dinosaurs are hanging out back then. Um, and uh, the is that real? Is that really what people think? No, 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 oh, okay. no, no that, that is, it's all from plants. It's all organic. Um, <laughs> so the actual uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, Permian Highway. Permian is Highway off the Permian Basin or through the Permian Basin. Permian Basin. Yes. Yeah. So everyone's trying to get pipelines in there. And so there's localized like so natural gas in the Permian Basin goes for less than other places just because there's too much supply and not enough demand. Got and they it. can't get out, get out of it. And so uh, there's also another part of oil and gas where there's this low-hanging fruit. So you could have um, drill a well, and it may produce 90% oil and 10% gas. Everyone obviously went after that first. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been like 10, 15 years since the, all the, the fracking started. And so now there's more and more low, like the, the low-hanging fruit's gone, and so there's more higher percentage of natural gas being produced. Fracking. Yes. The 30-second explanation. Fracking is the process of pumping sand to fracture rock that holds oil. Before fracking was invented, we just went to sand formations, and it flowed on its own. The reason why Saudi Arabia is so rich is because they need no fracking. They can drill 1,000 feet into the ground, which is super shallow for an oil well, hit oil, have no gas, and, like, no water. Oh, so these dudes are rich because not only do they have oil, yeah. but they don't have the other stuff. So they're like pure yeah, oil. Super pure, <laughs> super good. Yeah. No, they have gas, but like the like we so we we toured some people from Saudi um at one of our sites and they were oh, fascinated. Sa- Saudis are interested in this. Yes, they are. Um right. interesting. We'll get to that in a yeah, second. Yeah. <laughs> and they were fascinated by pump jack. And so pump jack, if you know, is like a plunger. It uh-huh. sucks the oil. And, and gas out of the earth because it's using science and pressure to correct. So then, so there's not enough natural pressure for it to free flow. So you have to get a plunger to suck it out in Texas. And they don't have. They that. don't. They were fascinated. They're like, oh, we've seen these in the movies. Like it's just you just drill a oil well and it comes out on its own. Like and it's so there's easy. so much built up pressure when they drill that it flows freely. Flows naturally, yeah. There's almost none or very little natural gas or water or anything else. Yep. And then going back to this fracking thing. Uh, be, I'm not an expert on Saudi, but like it looks like there's sand a lot of places, so they don't have to go through rock as well. Correct. So it's called shale formations, and so there theirs would be in sand formations. In in American, a lot of the bases that we found, it's in shale or rock, and so you split the rock open and the oil flows out. Why is it so controversial? Uh, It's super energy intensive. Um, There's a lot on the environmental fracking side with the water offtake because you're pumping this water in, it has to come back out, and it's you're so we're using water. To bust it, or we're using sand. You're and using water. sand and water, and, and, and blasting it in. Got yeah. it. Like almost like little bullets. Exactly. Yes. And so it's a very specific type of sand. Um, and so the oil men are at war with rocks to get to oil. That is yes, factually correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no wonder the politicians yeah. hate it. I got it. They, yeah, they they like to be at war. Yeah. <laughs> not, not to let other people fight wars. Yeah. All right. Um. So if, if the fracking process. Once you get past the rock, mm-hmm. it's the same thing, though. It's oil, gas, it's oil, whatever's gas, yeah. in there. Um, is there a difference in how much natural gas is found in shale versus uh, Good question. Rock? So, uh, yeah. and that's that's why. So shale, uh, when you frack it, it, there's something called a decline curve. Okay. So there's a massive amount of gas that comes out mm-hmm. in the first 18 months. And then over that 18 months, it's going to decline by about 90%. Does this have anything to do with, like, uh, oil and vinegar separates? So, like— oil and gas separates or something no, no? Uh, okay. it's just it's just purely on like uh, like you open a carbonated drink it's super fizzy when you drink it yeah. and then by 24 hours later it's like pretty much gone got it and it's you just, can just tell me that was a dumb question yeah no <laughs> <laughs> all right so you have that decline do you have the same decline in uh the rock when you're doing fracking so you know yeah so the decline curves happen from rock from oh, sand it's it. usually much much less Got it, because it's not kind of pent up and, bu- and built around. Okay. And so so naturally, if you're like, okay, we're going to drill all these oil wells, we're going to have a massive amount of natural gas come on, but then we know in 18 months it's going to be cut down by 90%. We're not going to build the capacity for that massive amount of gas. We're just going to flare it anyway. Yeah, and just burn it and before that, anyone And that's where knows. a lot of this comes from. Okay. Um, but I'm actually learning a lot here, so this is very helpful. Uh, you mentioned that the Saudis came and checked this out. Uh, 
I don't even know what to ask. So yeah. like, what, what are the Saudis doing? Why aren't they doing this? Not saying they're not. Um, they're, oh, they're, they're right. yeah, not, so, not, not, not saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they are very, very sophisticated. I mean, they have the largest oil and gas company in the world. Um, they have a ton of flared gas. They're, um, very economically incentivized too. And then uh, of course, from mitigating the flaring side. Too. Yeah. Is there a world where Saudi says we are going to stop all gas flaring because we're going to mine Bitcoin and we're going to beat the United States to being the environmentally friendly drillers? I, I mean, like, is that, is that a race like space race? Yeah, like, yeah. do we have like a, uh, stop uh, environmental gas race. flaring race? Yeah. I mean, everyone's collectively. So the world bank, everyone is like working right now. So the world bank like puts out a ton of stuff on flare data. I mean, like they have satellites tracking the flares. Like, I mean, you can see volumes. That's interesting. Yes. Why is the world bank so interested in this? Um, I don't know. That's a good They're question. supposed to be a bank. Good question. I don't know, right. but they are very, yeah. um, very focused on that from an environmental okay. perspective. But but the general scientific community, like, consensus Everyone is that, agrees like— Everyone flare gas is bad. Okay, all right. Yes. Yeah, there's, like, that is not a controversial thing whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, fossil fuel usage, how much energy, like, all that stuff's up for yeah. debate, but, like, everyone agrees that the flaring thing's bad. And the—I'm assuming the oil companies are just like, yo, dude, like, figure something out for us, or, like, we have to do this to get the oil? Uh— like, yep. what's their defense? Like, I'm sitting yep. there, like, if I'm an Exxon executive and, you know, right now we have people who literally are, like, gluing themselves to concrete and, you know, using tomato juice or whatever on the artwork. Uh, they're like, stop oil, you know, stop drilling for oil. Like, what is the defense of the oil industry as to why the gas flaring is happening or maybe, like, they haven't stopped doing it because they have to do it for to get to the oil? This episode is brought to you by 8 Sleep. Good sleep is a game changer, and the 8 Sleep pod is the best sleep machine. I sleep on it every single night. A great night of sleep allows you to be healthier, be more rested, and have more energy throughout the day. And on the brand new 8 Sleep Pod 3, you can sleep as cold as 55 degrees Fahrenheit or as hot as 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the secret of thermoregulation. Better sleep, better energy. Get yourself an 8 Sleep. You can go to 8sleep.com slash pomp today to go ahead and get $150 off your order. 8sleep.com slash pomp. Not only do I sleep on it every night, it literally changed my life, and I begged the founders to let me invest in the company. 8sleep.com slash pomp. Go get yourself an 8sleep pod and get a better night of sleep. Yeah, they have to get to the oil. Yeah, and so, they're, so um, yeah, it's just they have to do it, and there's not, it's not illegal. So there, but there's some, so, well, Colorado flaring's illegal. Oh, in Colorado, they said no flaring. No flaring, yes. What, wh this is very fascinating. So, yeah. like, when they said that, what changed in the oil and gas industry? You couldn't drill some wells. Interesting. So or, or you oil, have to delay the process for a well for a pipeline to come in to suck up all the natural resources. Got it. So this is like classic uh, government intervention in a free market because they have other, like ancillary yep. interest in terms of the environmental stuff, whatever. Uh, did some companies just pull out from drilling at all or they're like, no, we'll lay the pipelines. It'll just take us. Yeah, longer. it just takes way longer. Yeah. So I mean, and the, the, but it messed up a lot of projects. Some people saw it coming. Um, and then there's like a varying amount uh, of regulation. So for instance, in North Dakota, they're like, you can flare, but you have to gather it all to one location. And then flare 20 wells on one site. So, like, don't burn a hole in, like, the entire ozone. Just, like, put that bitch right up in exactly. one well, area. It's from, like, a light pollutant <laughs> perspective. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I'm just imagining, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, the conversation between politicians who are not experts yeah, in yeah. oil and gas and the oil and gas executives and some politicians, like, literally, like, yeah, hey, yeah. let's not burn the whole ozone. Let's just put it all in one area. <laughs> and then we'll just put one hole. <laughs> <laughs> like that's obviously better, yeah, right? Yeah, that's funny. That's the first thing that comes to your mind. <laughs> <laughs> There's some politician on DM me on Twitter, but like, actually, that is exactly how the, the law came together. Um, all right, so let's talk about the Bitcoin mining component of this. Yep. Is there anything different outside of like the modular uh, data centers and, and obviously the ability to take the natural gas and, and turn it into electricity? Is there anything different on the Bitcoin mining if it's the, uh, flared gas uh, or, or kind of mitigating flared gas or if I was just like in a normal data center or power plant or whatever? The, uh, so the biggest thing is lead times mm -hmm. and no need for transformers. So a big constraint in, in Bitcoin mining community is you need a transformer. Uh, when you have your own generator, you get to create your own voltage. And Bitcoin mining uses a very specific voltage because all the computers are Chinese. It's 415. The other component of that is timelines. You have these massive schedules with these public utilities to get connected. And you got to negotiate on the power pricing. Bitcoin mining on oil well, like chuck it out. You can turn on in two days mm -hmm. like, and you're in. There's no intent here to you just turn it on, make sure you have the air permit and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. So it's so the thing that I always tell people is it's a lot quicker and um, 
a lot less nuanced in terms of the supply chains. Yeah. And so what's the downside? Like if you were to argue, there's a bunch of credits. Yeah. I, I've, and no, there's a lot I, of downsides. I, I, obviously, uh, I think people know where I stand on this, but to uh, be clear, uh, I think that mitigating flared gas with Bitcoin mining is a good thing. Yes. Um, but I have seen a lot of critics online who are yelling and screaming about all kinds of crazy stuff. Like yep. what do you think are the, the fair critiques or the things that you're like, no, actually that's like a good point and y there's trade-offs here. And so we think it's a net positive to go do this, but like we do agree that that's like a downside or, or a risk. Yeah, I mean, our goal is to reduce the emissions for the marginal barrels of oil we need during the energy transition. So the... How can somebody hate that? Exactly, <laughs> like you're like, that's a good thing. <laughs> the side from, that people often complain about is you're propping up the oil companies. You're, allow, you're, you're giving them another stream of revenue. Um, that's one point I hear. I don't necessarily agree with that because the amount of money you're making off this like flared gas relative to like a thousand barrels of oil is minute. It's not going to move the needle for them at all. How, how much like just ballpark a thousand barrels of oil that they're selling like at like a hundred right like bucks, 80 bucks, whatever yeah. it is. Like, and then you're doing that per day. Yep. And then on the flared gas, the flared gas or, or the yeah. non flared gas that would have been flared. Yeah. How much could they make off that? Maybe a thousand dollars a day. Uh, so it's like literally nothing. nothing. Like pennies. Yeah. 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 And, the equivalent of like 12 barrels. Exactly. Of oil. Yeah. And, and, and on the side from like methane, like the big part of this is methane. Like every like point of methane you may get has 25 times the outpat, mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. just because it's so much more potent of a, of a greenhouse gas. So what's your guys' like game plan? You go to the companies, you say like buy our equipment from us and like we'll help manage this and like we'll get we'll get you in the mining game yeah. or do you show up and you're like, hey, uh, you geniuses, like just sell us the power at really cheap prices or sell us the gas at yeah, really yeah. cheap prices and then like, well, don't worry about what we're doing. Like we're just going to go over here and do our thing and then you're making a bunch of money. So yeah, we have two streams, both the, of what you described. So the first one is... We will buy your gas below market rate. We'll be fully transparent with what you're doing because oil, oil and gas guys are really smart. Yeah. So I, I know several people that were approached by Bitcoin mining guys. They thought it was such a good idea, but the Bitcoin mining guys are trying to be secretive and they spun off their own companies and did it themselves. I think I know exactly yes. the people you know. So, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, that, like, so oil and gas guys are really, really smart and clever. Yeah. And, and, and they're capitalists. Yes, and they have access to a lot of capital. They're up to, they're yeah. used to up and down markets. So, like, they get it. Yeah. Um, so, we're very transparent. Redneck rich <laughs> is like the There's perfect. There's some sophisticated oil men out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rednecks are very sophisticated. Have you have you ever <laughs> gone to, like, uh, somebody lives in the country, a redneck, and he's got, like, traps and everything? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not fuck they around. They doing. But they, but they have capital. And, they, and the, uh, also, I think what's important is, like, they're also very business savvy as well. Yes. Like, to, to your point about the sophistication. Oh, yeah. And I talk to, like, guys all the time in oil and gas. The, 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 the very successful ones within two to three minutes of me explaining it, sitting down for like 30 minutes like you, they reiterate it back to me and they understand all the levers yep. of how to pull. And how much this is a weird question, but like uh, when people think of the oil and gas industry as they do most industries, like, oh, they all believe the same type of things. They yep. all, you know, vote politically the same way. They all have the same values and ethos. Obviously, that's not true, but there are generalizations. Is there something to do with like the ethos of Bitcoin overlays very well with like the oil and gas community? Or is that uh, an ignorant external view and like they don't care about that shit? They just are like, can I make money or not? I would say based on stereotypes with Bitcoin and stereotypes of oil and gas folks, there is like pretty significant overlap. Got there. it. Okay. Uh, and to be clear, like I've had many, many conversations over the years, uh, firemen, right? Yep. Even police officers. Like there's a, there's a whole bunch of people who have certain generalizations about their profession. Uh, and it tends to align very well with Bitcoin yep. and therefore they, they tend to be sympathetic to it. And so oil and gas being one of them. Okay. Exactly. Um, so you guys go, you, you're like, Hey, let's work together. What do customers normally do? Do they want to have you guys do the operations and maybe just get like a revenue share or do they just want to sell you the gas and like, they don't want to ever hear the word Bitcoin. Correct. So there's two. So some like are like, we don't want to mess with it. It's too much money. We don't trust it. Blah, blah. Awesome. Great. We'll buy your gas. We'll buy it for this amount. We'll have a gas purchasing agreement. No different than you would sign with a midstream. Mm -hmm. So we structure everything very familiar. Okay. Uh, and then we manage everything, put up all the capital, take the gas, mine the Bitcoin, and they never hear from us. So in that scenario, there's no upside for them outside of what they signed on the contract. Correct. Okay. Well, th but keep in mind, there is significant upside on reducing emissions, reducing their carbon footprint from wall street perspective like i mean it has a lot of implications I, we've talked to oil and gas companies they don't even care if they make money sometimes mm -hmm. because they need to get rid of the black eye of course of course yeah 
Uh, do you know who uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is? I don't. The Strive Asset Management. He writes letters to Exxon and <laughs> to the shareholders. And he'll be like, uh, I am one of your shareholders. Uh, I do not think that you should be worried about this ESG bullshit. Uh, I think your job and your uh, responsibility to shareholders is to make money. Right? And yep. so supposedly, uh, him and I spent almost four hours together. Yep. The executives love that type of approach because now they say, hey, all these big financial organizations, we get it. You guys want us to do this ESG thing. We also have other investors who do not care about that. They just want us nope. to make money. And so what it does is it provides like a balance. And again, they're not going to do all one, or the, one or the other, yeah. but like it provides for more of kind of a rational view. It seems like what you guys are doing here is like you're almost providing a, a, a solution that they can then go brag about to Wall Street and be like, hey, we have actually found a way to mitigate our, our flaring of gas. Like we're good. Correct. Right? We, we try to be very pragmatic ESG mm -hmm. of like, we will handle it, we'll reduce carbon emissions by this amount, and we'll help you, and we'll make money at the same time. Like, So if you just buy the gas, yep. that's clear. What about this other option? Like, I'm assuming this is like more like a partnership where like you guys are going to do the operations but then give them some of the Bitcoin or the profits? Correct. So we have a full-scale manufacturing facility where we manufacture all this in-house specific to Bitcoin mining and, and oil and gas. Sometimes we have oil and gas producers just flat out buy all of our equipment and, and do it themselves. Like, they are smart enough to figure it out. I say, like, Bitcoin mining, like, you don't, like, want a teenager on site, but you could have a 20-year-old on site. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah, me, me and I don't know if you know Jason Williams. Like, yeah. we figured it out. We're dumb. Like, <laughs> it's not that hard. Like, it's very easy. You plug a power cord in and an Ethernet cord in and then, like, type in an IP address. Like, you're done. Yeah. Like, it's not that hard. By the way, the typing part, that was kind of, kind of confusing at first. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, but the plugging in, like, yeah, we yeah. figured that out. Yeah. And, it's not, and so, like, and then every, like, the problem is, is, like, it's so like new yeah like anyone who mines bitcoin sounds like they're a genius yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and they're not i mean yeah. i felt like a genius <laughs> you feel like a genius your grandma's so proud of you but like in reality you're plugging in that ethernet power yeah. cord so when you do uh more of this like partnership thing are you guys mining bitcoin like giving them a percentage of it sometimes the contracts are structured such would you give them bitcoin or cash it depends we're open to either yeah. um we usually probably, they probably want cash yeah usually it's cash yeah, yeah. um it's interesting because uh, if they get into the game, the oil and gas producers, and they start to mine themselves, then they will be forced with the question of do we keep it in Bitcoin or do we put it in cash? And one of the things we know is if you can remain solvent for long periods of time, putting it on the balance sheet in Bitcoin usually ends up being a pretty good decision. Correct. And Michael Saylor has done a good job of helping out with like on the publicly traded companies. Like there's a lot that goes into owning that Bitcoin asset. And mm -hmm. so he's kind of created the framework. Um no, we, I've tried to present it to some of these oil and gas companies that are publicly traded, and like it just is never really well received. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, yeah, you're 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 like the worst person in the world to go talk to them. Yeah. You're oh, like, yeah. hey, so this ESG thing, which most of them I don't think even really enjoy talking about. Like, we have a potential solution, but we're going to introduce this new <laughs> issue that you're going to have to answer questions yeah. about. And I could see them just being like, all right, like, exactly. uh, can you just buy our gas? And, and like, oil and gas too is very um, sen seniority based. Oh, interesting. It is. It's not like tech, anything like that. So it's like very much like. So like the CEO it. is like been around for a while. Oh yeah. These are all like, and, and it's very much like top down. Mm -hmm. Like, so the fact that you would have something like a 20 year old in the space talking about something to work with is like very, a hard hump to get over in the first place. Are there oil and gas companies that are being started by young people with this specific purpose? To mine Bitcoin? Yeah. No. So like the vertical integration really is what you guys have done, which is like, uh, we're miners, but we will on the manufacturing side do it. That's the vertical integration. Nobody has yet been able to connect like we own the power plants and we own the mining uh, and like we want to be the boss. Correct. Yeah. ExxonMobil has not like manufactured something yourself and done it in house. Yeah. No. Well, I, I wouldn't expect them to do it, but the opposite, like have miners gone and tried to buy the power plants yet? Like buy, like, are you, and so, so you, are you referencing plant? on grid or off grid right now? Either one. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I've seen miners go and buy on oh, yeah. grid power plants, yes. but have we seen miners go try to get the actual like oil operations, oil and natural mm, gas operations yes. control? I know, yeah, I know a couple of Bitcoin miners that have a P5 operating license in the state of Texas, which what is, is what you P5? need. It's it's what it's your driver's license to operate an oil well in Texas. Interesting. I've seen that, and they are actively operating them, or they just have. Yes, the license I know guys to that like are Bitcoin centric. That got a license, they're drilling for a well and, and using it to mine Bitcoin. That's fucking cool. Yeah. Wow.
<laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different than our mission, but like it is like crazy on the vertical integration side, like what people are, because yeah. there's monetization to make. Yeah. Of course. Um, when you think about what you all are doing, yeah. tell me more about like the business and kind of what you guys think is your specific or like unique value yeah. to kind of keep pushing forward. So to date, we've mitigated a quarter billion cubic feet of natural gas that would have been flared or vented. Our goal is to go in with, because have the highest amount of uptime because having good up rate uh, uptime on off grid is extremely hard and difficult. We've managed to really show that we're very competent on that side from operating uh, and then continuing to expand on the international front. So we have a JV uh, down in Argentina that we're going to be kicking off pretty soon. uh, And then some other international plays where it's the Permian basin, but all the more there's a ton of gas and then less and less, infrastructure just because of less capital in the space. Yeah. So really what you all want is you want areas with huge pockets of oil and natural gas. You want very little infrastructure in place. You want people who are sophisticated and intelligent and have capital. Yep. Uh, and then because it's just the big, and, and we don't necessarily want that. Right. But no, it is but the, there, but like, that's, that's, that, the, that's, that's what the we're entry point to the market. That's the entry right? point. Yeah. It, so it's if, there and then we're here to fix. Yeah, the problem. exactly. And, and really if you were to overlay, okay, like the best places for you all to go in and get started also happens to overlay with the exact areas where there's probably the most flaring on like a percentage exactly. basis. And like where there's flares, there's a lot of flares because they all have the same issue geographically. Man, it almost is like Bitcoiners are solving a real problem. It is. Um, what can people who listen to this or watch this, um, what can they do to help? Is it like an education thing? Is it like a come work at these companies? H- how can they participate? Um, I think it would be generalized education in the space of like, and you did done a great job asking like very nuanced questions. Yeah, dumb questions. But I mean, they, but they were like, like you, 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 you kind of intuitively understood like the client curves, right? Those are like interesting things. You know what I did this morning? Yeah. I Googled oil and gas. And that's where I started. <laughs> 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 and then I saw a diagram and I still don't understand how the pipes go in and then there's the angle. It's crazy. And, and I was like, holy shit, these people are smart. <laughs> yeah. And then like, yeah, Bitcoin miners are like arrogant enough that they think they can't mine Bitcoin. It's like, no, they don't need you. <laughs> Um, like, I don't think people no. understand. When I saw the diagram, yeah. I literally was like, so you put a straight pipe into the ground, but somehow it ends up at an end. deviating it, yeah. And, and you're shit. hitting like a formation that's like not very big. Yeah, I was very And impressed. they do it perfect, yeah. All right, so what can people do after they listen to this? Um, it's a good question. I, I would recommend um, looking, I mean, seeing flares in the areas. People reach out to us all this time. We've had great opportunities of saying, hey, oh my goodness, I saw a flare here. Like, can you help me like mitigate it? Sometimes we can't, sometimes we can. Um, oh, you got like flare hunters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> you know, I have people all the time being like, hey, my grandparents, they own, they own the mineral lights for this. They've had this flare. They hate it. Like, can you come help us? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So even like individual families yeah. or whatever, they've got some of these because they've got the land. Yeah, they got the land, mineral rights in Texas. Yeah, so it's like not uncommon for that to happen with us. Yeah, uh, and, and mean, like, that's pretty fucking yeah, cool. It is cool. Like, uh, and, oh, and, yeah, my grandparents just have an oil drill and they're flaring gas. They call it mailbox money. Really? Yeah, mailbox money. So they're, they're just selling it off. And the oil company just sends them a check in the mail every month for the royalties that they own. Oh, got it. So they're not actually operating it. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's All just right. on their land. Got it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably pretty lucrative. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Yeah, it's a good, yeah. Homesteading was a good thing back then. All right. So if you, uh, know the flair, no flair, reach out, reach out. Where can we send people to do that? Uh, you can go to our website, gigenergy.com. Uh, we have a submission form for just contact and we, we even have a phone number. So, uh, someone will pick up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's like the ghost old bus, school. Ghostbusters hotline. Well, we're, yeah, it's oil and gas. So yeah, yeah. We, we try and be like super pragmatic, down to earth, easy to contact. And like, yeah. we get it. How can we help? Yeah. All right. So you got flare hunters now. We're yep. going to drastically increase the size of the flare hunter uh, community. Uh, is there anything else that people could do that could be helpful? Um, understand Bitcoin. Understand that energy usage is not necessarily a bad thing in mm-hmm. general. Like the R squared with GDP relative to energy consumption is very, very high. Mm-hmm. And that's for a reason. Uh, so don't feel guilty about using energy. Um, <laughs> and then understand why Bitcoin using a relatively small amount of energy might be a good thing. Um, I have yet to see any of the uh, eco-friendly people uh, advocate for stopping the use of refrigerators or washers and dryers. Yep. But my favorite one, a couple years ago, I was trying to think to myself, like, what's something absurd 
that consumes more energy than we all think, uh, that you could basically sub out Bitcoin and put this in because they were like, oh, Bitcoin consumes more energy than like whatever country. Yeah. And I remember like Googling around. It took me like way longer than I want to admit. And then all of a sudden I came across this random article on a website that kind of looked like, I don't know if this is real or not. And they said Christmas lights. Yes. And so then I would like do some more research or whatever. And I was like, oh, Christmas lights use more energy than some countries. Like we should stop Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just quit it. And I forget where I said it, but the first time I said it, the reaction, I was like, home run. Yeah, it was. <laughs> like for sure, that is yeah. the one that like, yeah, like this sounds ridiculous, right? Yeah. Because uh, that has no economic uh, value or whatever. It's entertainment. Yep, but it like, is, but it's like, it's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody's arguing that like your life is better because of Christmas lights. You may be happier. You may ha have reinforced. And that's a all good use things. of energy. You're willing to pay the bill, and there you go. I don't think that we should stop Christmas lights. You know another good one? What? Hot water. Hot water. So like you need for like washing dishes yeah. and stuff, but like 30 percent of your electricity bill is usually because of hot water. So just because you want to have a warm shower in the morning. Yeah. That's where all the energy is. Yeah, you're going. soft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. We, we should get rid of the soft people and then yeah. we'll have less yeah. energy yeah. usage. Yeah. <laughs> As we joke, though, but like uh, dryers, that was, that was the that's one. one. I, I forget somebody who told me it, but they were like, yeah, like you need the, the actually, you don't even need the washer really, right? But like, you could make an argument that uh, dryers are simply consuming energy because people are too lazy to be patient to just let the clothes dry outside. Yeah. Right? They're like, go to other High countries. Like, yeah, yeah, people are whatever. Uh, and really washing clothes as well. But like, okay, we'll give you the washer, but mm -hmm. like no dryer type thing. Um, and then refrigeration is the one that cracks me up. Yes. Right? It's like. Just salt your food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? You don't understand. <laughs> like, yeah, we get it. Um, but I, I, I think that the narrative is changing. Like yep. you know, maybe the last thing is just like, do you feel like the pendulum is kind of swinging in favor of uh, there was a narrative. That narrative probably is not rooted in as many facts and data points as originally it was perceived. And so it's kind of swinging back towards uh, what would be maybe like a pro Bitcoin mining argument or no? You're, oh, no, no. I think it's going to get worse. I, and I, I think it's like because it's a very it's a it's a factual statement and it's hard to understand. And so, um, yeah, I think it's going to get worse and worse. I think it's going to be the number one narrative that Bitcoin uses too much energy. And like if you think something's like has zero intrinsic value, of course, you think any marginal amount of energy going towards mm -hmm. it's going to be a waste. Mm -hmm. So the inherent problem is not that it should be using X amount of energy. It's the fact that they don't see any value in it. And that's mm -hmm. OK. I understand that they'll eventually come around to it. But until like the majority of the population comes around to the fact that they put some value into Bitcoin, there's always going to be the energy argument, in my opinion. It's been the single most uh, disciplined monetary policy oh, for sure over the last yeah. three years, over the last 14 years. I know, and it, yeah, it doesn't doesn't waver. <laughs> 900 Bitcoin a day. <laughs> All right. Uh, where can we send people to find you on the internet? Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Lostro, L-O-H-S-T-R-O-H. Uh, that's the easiest way to find me. I really appreciate this. I know I ask dumb questions, but I did learn a lot. Uh, and my hope is that people who uh, listen to this and understand now gas flaring, uh, shale versus f uh, fracking, yep. uh, and many of the other- Shale versus sand. Sand, yeah, yeah. sorry. I see like how stupid I am. Um, but uh, people who uh, kind of learn about this stuff, like this is, uh, I don't know, this is like the um, uh, appetizer, like go learn. Yes, right. yeah, this is just the surface. Yes, and, and uh, as much as I joke around, I started Googling with oil and gas, which I did. Uh, very quickly, I got pretty like in the weeds. And what was fascinating to me is how much good information there actually was. Like there's a lot of explainer content and things like that online uh, that are pretty easy to consume for somebody who has very little knowledge about it. So uh, hopefully people could do that. And if not, then they can reach out to you and you can give them an individual crash course. <laughs> Absolutely. Appreciate <laughs> right. it. Thank you. Thanks for having me.